All right, can everybody hear me all right? All right. So you guys ready for this? Yes. All right. I hope I am. Because <laughs> uh, I'm just a, I'm, I'm a introvert, and this is like out of my comfort zone. But, you know, the Lord has called us to share, to be able to talk about Him and share what He's done for us. So what I'm, uh, I'm speaking on the Holy Spirit, just like the others, and mine is going to, it's going to talk how the Holy Spirit teaches, leads, and guides us. And then I have a section at the end where we're going to have some testimonies from different people uh, from the church. So it's going to be a little bit different than you're used to, but it, when we were going through in our elders meeting, picking these things, and Kirk came to me and he said, so George, what are you going to speak on? <laughs> the Holy Spirit prompted me to say testimonies. Now, when I said testimonies, everybody kind of like just went, <laughs> like, is that it? <laughs> but there's te in these testimonies, you're going to see how he teaches us, how he leads us, and how he guides us. And he was just prompting me to use this as, it's always good to talk about it. We can read it in scripture, but this thing is real. It's not from back then. It's right now. And what better way of doing it other than showing some of these testimonies of it happening? So that's where he was like driving me and he's stirring me. So when we think about the Holy Spirit, we think of spiritual things, right? And when you think about in the world, how many movies deal with some sort of spiritual or supernatural? I mean, you have the Marvels, you know, uh, Marvel Universe, you know, DC, all those things where people have these great abilities. A lot of people also believe in, you know, like the tarot cards and the reading and all that. That's easy for a lot of the world to believe and accept. But when it comes to the Holy Spirit and God's supernatural power, people don't, it seems like they let it glaze by them. It's almost like, I believe, if they accepted it and acknowledge it, that means that they would have to change. That then all those things that the Bible says would be real, and I'm going to be in trouble. So when you think about it, I mean, I like Marvel movies. I like to see those kind of things. They're, they're neat. But I understand that they're just a movie. But how many times can people get wrapped up emotionally involved in movies because our spirit knows that there's a supernatural. If we don't know the truth, we'll grasp onto anything. But I'm going to start in John chapter 3, and I'm going to read uh, 5 through 8, and then 9 through 12. So this is Jesus, and he's talking to Nicodemus, which was a leading Pharisee of Israel. Jesus answered and said, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sound, but you don't know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Then Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you the teacher of Israel? And yet you do not understand these things. Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know and bear witness to what we have seen, but you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? So some of the things I'd like to pull out of this is, first of all, the Holy Spirit is kind of like the reference he's given as the wind, right? We don't know where it comes from. We don't know where it goes technically. We can't see it. But we can feel its effects. And those effects can tell us that it's real. And then the other thing I like to pull out of this part is when I, I look at Nicodemus and his position of who he was, that he dedicated his life to serving God, studying scripture. But yet he just totally missed it. And when you think about Think about that. 
what, what was Jesus thinking at that time? And I'll just give you an analogy. It's kind of like, imagine an owner of a football team walks down to his quarterback that he just drafted number one. And he walks up to him and he hands him a football and he, the guy looks at the football and says, what am I supposed to do with this? <laughs> I mean, I'm sure that's what's going through his mind. It's like, what I got going on here? But that, that was the reality of it. He just didn't understand. Well, as we go through these scriptures, you're going to see the Holy Spirit can make these things known to us. And they, this is how we start to understand how the Lord uses the scripture and how he uses the Holy Spirit to start to reveal these heavenly things that our minds can't understand. So let's go to Acts 13, verses 1 through 4. Now there were in the church of Antioch prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manan, a lifelong friend of Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then after fasting and praying, they laid their hands on them and sent them off. So being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Seleucia, and from there they sailed to Cyprus. So here the Holy Spirit has given them direction, guided them who to send, in sending them off. So here we can see the Holy Spirit and how he is starting to use those things that we were talking about. Leading us and guiding us, directing us, teaching us. There's a reason why the Holy Spirit, we don't always understand the reasons why. But we need to be, first of all, listening to hear the Holy Spirit speak. And then when we do, even if we don't understand it, we need to learn to obey. Because it comes to the, just like Nicodemus, he didn't understand. Our minds won't, aren't always going to understand the whole big picture. But let's look at it this way. If you were working for a boss, and the boss gave you some direction, does that boss need to explain to you every little detail all the way down to the end of what the reason why you're doing what you're doing? No, they give you something to do, a task, and they expect you to do it. They're, they're, and that's the same thing. The Holy Spirit's giving you what you need to know at the time you need to know, and we need to be obedient. Because our minds can't always comprehend everything. When I think about some of the things that the Holy Spirit does, and you ever hear the phrase, you kill two birds with one stone? Well, when you see some of these testimonies, you're going to see where, where the Holy Spirit basically did that analogy. They killed two birds with so, one, uh, one stone. They taught somebody to hear his voice, and then it also blessed somebody, and then even blessed the person who used it. And, and if our minds really dare to even expand, we don't know what the after effects of those brief moments will have through the rest of those people's lives and who they will affect and who they will touch. And if we understood those things and understand the importance of it, we would, I think, stir our hearts up a little bit more to pay attention and to be diligent to do them. Because it's easy to think for ourselves, right? Because we are, normally we're self-seeking. We, we're always looking out for ourselves. It's just like a, almost like a human nature for the flesh. But when we put on the Spirit in Jesus, Jesus doesn't look at himself. He looks at others. And that's how we should be. So as the Holy Spirit is speaking us and teaching us, we should have that same heart to be able to not look at ourselves, but look at what the Holy Spirit is trying to do. Because normally, it, it's not frivolous. There is a purpose and a reason. And somebody's being ministered to, somebody's being encouraged, it's, it's changing their life in some way or fashion. Let's go ahead and go to Acts 13. Chapter 13, verses 9 through 11. Now, just a little uh, before story, before I start reading this, is there was a false prophet, Bar-Jesus, who was coming against Paul 
as, he, as they were trying to do the Lord's work and, and teach and speak. So you have to understand that he was causing a lot of trouble for him. But it says here, I'm going to start in here where it says, But Saul, who was also called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked intently at him and said, Villainy, will you not stop making crooked the straight paths of the Lord? And now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon you, and you will be blind and unable to see the sun for a time. And immediately mist and darkness fell upon him, and he went about seeking people to lead him by the hand. When I think of that, I mean, just think of that moment. How many of us would sit there and say, say something like that, first of all? That would be a difficult thing, but he said he was full of the Holy Spirit. I had some times where it seems like I went on automatic pilot. And I would imagine that's partly part of this where the Holy Spirit come upon me. And it gave me the boldness to be able to say and do the things that need to be done. But when I think about that, it's just kind of crazy. Because in my normal mind, I would never walk up to anybody and say, hey, you're going to become blind. Right. You just wouldn't do it, right? right? But the Holy Spirit knew. And the Holy Spirit gave him the boldness and the words to say when he needed to say them. And then we go on to Acts 16, chapter 16, verses 6 and 7, 6 through 7. And they went through the region of Phygria, sorry, and Galatia, having been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia. And when they had come to Mysia, they attempted to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them. They didn't understand why. But they understood to hear the Holy Spirit. And because of that, they were obedient. Who knows what was lying in wait at that time? Could they have been killed? We don't know. Because they listened to the Holy Spirit and didn't go. Or maybe the Holy Spirit was saying, these people are ripe for harvest over here. Let's go here instead of going to this place at this time. Sometimes we just can't understand that. So that's why we have to be quiet and we have to listen. We have to dive into the Lord to be able to understand his word and how he uses the helper, the Holy Spirit, to help us, to guide us through these things. Because there are times that if we don't listen to the Holy Spirit, we could cause ourselves to stumble in the wilderness for a long time. Instead of getting to that promised land or that thing that is needing to be done. And, it, and I know myself, I don't ever want to be that person. I don't want to say, okay, well, that, that's just, that's my own great mind. I, I'm thinking, nah, that's just coincidence. I, I'm going to go here anyways. You know, at one time, I did think that some of the things that the Holy Spirit gave me was my great mind. Because that was my lack of understanding of the Holy Spirit. And I'm glad that he showed me. But when he did, he actually showed me through some very humbling and hard, difficult times because I was just stubborn, thinking that it was me. Instead of believing that all good things come from God. And it's just kind of something how the Lord does that, how he changes us. But your heart has to be soft and willing to want to hear and to want to do. But I have a little bit of a, a testimony, but it's kind of, when I started preparing this, the Holy Spirit basically brought back to my attention some of the testimonies that I've had. And this one in particular, he brought it to my mind, and I just, I want to share it because he put a, a you know, this is how our minds work, let's put it that way. But there was one time we were worshiping up front, Jen and I, and as we were worshiping, the Lord spoke to me and told me that he gave, the Holy Spirit told me that he, he gave something to Jen. 
And as we were worshiping, I just kind of did one of these numbers. I looked over, you know, to see what was going on. She looked normal. I was kind of looking to see if she was like tearing up or getting emotional or excited or something. But she was just normal, just raising her hands and worshiping. So I'm like, okay. And they said, I gave Jen something. So I said, okay. So I reached over and I said, hey, Jen, the Holy Spirit just told me he gave you something. And she says, wow, I was just praying in my head. The Lord gave me something. And I was just praying for confirmation. So the Holy Spirit was able to read my wife's mind. And when you think about that, I never thought about it till I started, till this was brought to my mind. I'm thinking, Lord, you can use the Holy Spirit to read my wife's mind? Why haven't you helped me out beforehand? <laughs> Help a brother out. Throw me a bone. <laughs> you know what he says? He's going, George, I have. You're not listening. Change those batteries in your spiritual hearing aids. It's in the word. <laughs> but anyways, isn't it something how he can like bring those things back to stir us up, but yet he can also still teach us even in those moments when I'm saying, hey, why can't you help me out more? But it's just kind of like those, those things. It's just, it's just neat. And it's just, I can't put a word on it. That's why I get so excited at spiritual gifts. And not just here, but other places. And I'm always looking for it. And I'm going to tell you, I, like I told you earlier, I'm an introvert. I'm a quiet, backwards person that if you notice or watch me, I'm not one of those people that are looking for the limelight or wanting. But I've told the Lord, I said, look, I said, you use me, I'm going to go regardless of the situation. I don't care what I look like, how, what the result is. I'm just going to be obedient and walk in it. And when you think of some things that the Lord has done in the Bible, just think if they questioned and did not walk in it. What would be missed out on? And I don't ever want to be that person to not hear and obey to do it. You know, when we think about this, the Holy Spirit and the Lord and all this supernatural stuff and everything in the Bible, how he said that he sent this helper to be able to help us do these things. And as we're out preaching the gospel, that there are going to be great and mighty things done. People healed like the testimony today. People raised from the dead. Demons cast out. So many things. But yet our minds sometimes glaze over that stuff. How many times will we take the opportunity to go pray for the dead? Anybody? Can you give me a, sh a hand? Why wouldn't we? I mean, if, if there was a dead person, would you pray for him? Well, it's a lot of times it's because of our unbelief, right? Because we can't see it happen in our mind. Well, that's what I'm trying to say is disconnect from your mind and connect to the Holy Spirit and the Lord and allow him to lead you. Because the Lord is wanting to bring glory to his name. He's wanting to reach people. And the loss is reached through sometimes these miracles of these things happening. So that's why I'm, I'm bringing an importance to let the Holy Spirit lead us, teach us, and guide us. Because if we don't, there's lost souls out there. And this is how he sometimes changes hearts. Just like the woman at the well. He told her everything about her. That she knew that nobody could. And it changed her life. And she went into the town. And it changed a town's life. Life. When you think about those things, that stirs me up to want to be obedient when I hear. Even though my mind and my eyes are looking at it and saying this is crazy and impossible to walk in that. So let's go to John 14, 26. 
It says, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. So, this, he was talking to the, the disciples at this time because they walked with him. Well, we don't have God in physical form here to walk with like they did, but we have his living word. We have his Holy Spirit. So, if you want to the Holy Spirit to bring remembrance, guess what that means? You got to be in the Word, right? You got to be in the Word, seeking what the Lord is saying. So that way, when the time comes, the Holy Spirit can bring that to your remembrance to be able to bless and do the work of the Father. So I, I just wanted to bring that up because I've noticed in my journey... That picture a bird, I like, I like the eagle because I just think it's like the king of the air, but pick whatever bird you want, and you look at the wingspan as both wings are spread out. How well would it fly if one arm was like this and one wing was like this? <laughs> Wouldn't do very well, right? Well, a couple people, uh, Rayo and Kirk both used this analogy here not too long ago, and it just kind of stuck in my mind is, you know, the two wings are kind of like the Word and the Holy Spirit. We need to be strong in both of them to be able to fly and do the work of the Lord. If we are strong in the Word but weak in the Holy Spirit, we can flap really good over here, but we're not using this part of it, right? And if we're strong over here and we're not over here, we don't have the Word to balance this out then we're not going to do very good either. So, the reason I'm bringing that analogy up is because it's very easy to want to say, well, I'm good at the Word. I'm going to read the Word because it's easy, right? Because I can see the page. I can turn the page. I can, I can look at it. But the Holy Spirit, we can't see. It's like the wind blowing around. So, we don't always understand it. So, sometimes that makes it difficult. But both of them need the same amount of emphasis to be able to fly, to be able to soar. And sometimes we don't see that. So I thought that was a really good analogy because I'm going to tell you I was like this. I, I, I thought I was very good in spiritual gifts, but the word was like this. So the Lord said, hey, George, you need balance. You're not balanced. I can't use you in the way that I need to use you if you're not balanced because Buddy, if you came to a cliff and jumped off, you're going like that. And let me tell you, when you're going to pray for somebody who's dead to see them raised, you're standing at a cliff getting ready to step off. Do you want to do this? Not saying that I'm telling people to go pray for the dead, but I'm just saying, you, you, you understand my point? Those things... We should be expecting them just as much today as it was back then. The Lord didn't change. He's still the same. He's still wanting to do all these things, and he is. But I, I don't know about you, but I want to be a part of it. I want to experience it because that is just showing his awesome power and his glory and to see people's lives changed. I saw what he's done for my life, and I'd like to see it happen to others. Let's go to John 15, verse 26. It says, But when the Helper comes, whom I will send from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me. Just backing up some of the things we were just talking about. The Spirit will show the Lord. It will, it will bring Jesus out when you're used by it and people will see it. I've actually been having some things happening at work because I've been getting this wing bigger to go along with this wing. I used to go around and I used to think that, man, Lord, I wish you would send me the opportunities. And that's literally what I was doing. I was like, Lord, send the opportunities. And I'd go around all day looking for opportunities. I never found any. 
or they were very rare. Well, what the, the Lord showed me is as I started growing this wing, I don't even have to look for the opportunities. They're falling in my lap. They're just happening. It's not even like I'm looking for them. It's just like it just starts flowing out. My boss is, came up with this thing where she's having all the managers sit down with their employees that report to them and do, she calls it a kumbaya meeting. <laughs> kind of like get to know them, build relationships, team building. And at first, I was pretty reluctant because that's not my personality. And I told her, I was flat out said, well, I'm pretty in touch. You know, I, I'm always out on the floor involved with my guys. They know what's going on. And I know what's going on with them. But I'm going to tell you, this sitting down, I've actually started reading scriptures to them. Sharing the gospel with them. And it's not like I was even trying. It just started coming out. Because as you start to talk to people and you hear about what's going on in their life, you, you already have the word that's in your heart that applies to every life situation. Right. And it's just, hey, I actually had a guy that works for me that literally came in and said, he says, I look forward to this meeting every month. And he says, you know, he says, I got a lot of stress and a lot of things going on in my life. And he says, a lot of pressure. He says, but when I come in here and we talk, he says, that just kind of goes away. You just don't know what you're affecting and who you're affecting. And I just thought it was so neat. Not that it took me so long to get to this point, but how that all works, both wings. So I would just encourage you guys, even though we're talking about the Holy Spirit, that we really need to be in the Word as well just as much. Acts 8, uh, chapter 8, verses 29. And I only have a little small part on here because probably most people have heard the story, but what's happening is Philip was walking and, it, and the Holy Spirit basically talked to him and then the Spirit said to Philip, go over and join this chariot. There was Ethiopian in the chariot and he was reading out the book of Isaiah. And when Philip went over there and he heard that, he asked him, you, you want to know what you're reading? And he, and he did. And that, it changed that guy's life, and he got baptized. But what happened if Philip didn't let the Holy Spirit guide and direct him to go over by that chariot? That guy, who knows how long before the Lord would have sent somebody else? That he was sitting there reading that, not understanding it. His heart was wanting to understand it. So the Lord provided Philip to help him understand it. Let's go to Romans chapter 8, verses 26 and 27. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. The Spirit knows, like He knew what was on my wife's mind, what was going on in that chariot. He knows. And we may not know what to pray for when we're praying for somebody, but if our heart is sensitive to hearing the Spirit, He will speak to us and teach us and tell us what to, what to pray. And I even have a testimony on that as well. It's just neat because when I said the testimonies, I was given five specific people to give testimonies. And it was neat because I'll be honest with you, when you ask for people to give testimonies, sometimes you don't always get participation because it's not easy to stand up here. And I don't blame them. But all of them said yes and they all did it. Normally you would think you'd be lucky if you got 80%. But 100 for 100. I didn't have to go to plan B. Everybody that I asked, first time, it, it happened. 
because that's the Holy Spirit moving. So he's wanting you to see specific testimonies. And when I started to sit back and I started looking at it, I can see why. Because it touches different ages, different genders, different types of backgrounds that we can all relate to, that we can have some sort of understanding to make it more part of, oh, that's attainable for me. So it should be ready for the testimony. So we're going to go ahead and do the testimonies, and then I, I'll sum it up after that. Years ago, from time to time, a name of someone would pop into my mind. And I started recognizing when it would happen repeatedly that maybe the Holy Spirit was prompting me to pray for someone or encourage them, maybe to send a note, something along those lines. But I began to recognize those promptings as the Holy Spirit. And so one fall, I was going to make several pumpkin rolls. And uh, as I was pulling together the ingredients and the recipe, my neighbor's name popped in my mind. And I kind of dismissed it at first and then a few days pass and as I go to make the pumpkin roll, her name pops in my mind again. And I thought, boy, this has happened twice now. Maybe there's something here the Holy Spirit's wanting me to do. So I make the pumpkin roll and I call my neighbor. Now I'm a little reluctant to call her because upon meeting her a few years earlier, she explained to me that she had allergies to about 15 to 20 different environmental or food ingredients. So I was a little skeptical that she actually would want the pumpkin roll or even be allergic to some of the ingredients. So anyway, in the phone call, I asked her if she's familiar with pumpkin rolls and she says yes. And you know, the one with cinnamon and pumpkin and cream cheese in the middle. And she was familiar. In fact, it was one of her very favorite desserts. And she explained to me that she had a friend who had made one for her every year. And this year her friend was too sick and she was unable to make that pumpkin roll for her. So I asked her if she wanted the pumpkin roll and of course she did. And my heart was blessed that, you know, there was a part of me that was reluctant to call her because I wasn't sure she was even gonna want the pumpkin roll. And I could have decided to go with that feeling. Instead, I obeyed the voice of the Holy Spirit and my neighbor lady was blessed and the Lord just confirmed again that that was his voice speaking to me. About four years ago, my family and I brought home a puppy and we named her Olive. After we had had her for about a week, one night my mom was letting Olive out to go to the bathroom and Olive got scared and lay shut from my mom's hand. Olive started running down our street and my mom chased after her, but Olive was too quick. My mom ran back to the house and told us what had happened. My dad and mom called all of our family and they came and helped us start looking for her. My dad and sister started looking around the neighborhood and me and my, my mom and I got in the car and started driving around. After we were driving for a little bit looking for Olive, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and told me that we would find Olive and she would be okay. About two minutes later, my dad and sister found Olive, and here she is to prove it. So I was sent out of town to build a Goldhofer trailer. And after 16 hours of building it, I was running into some issues, some electrical issues, some power issues, just kept on raising some codes up on the computer that there was a problem. I was getting frustrated. I was getting yelled at, cussed at from the, the manager. I was done. I was calling it quits. Uh, I left, called Jenny. I says, I quit. I'm coming home. I'm not doing this job. She says, you're no quitter. You go back to the hotel and you pray about this. So I went to the hotel, got a shower, prayed. God showed me a cable to look at. The next day I showed up at the job. The rest of the crew showed up. I said, I need you guys just to step away for a minute. I need to go look at something. 
So I went straight to the cable that God showed me. It was out of alignment. I plugged, replugged it in, cleared all the codes in the, the trailer. Everything worked. I didn't think about at the time trusting Jesus, praying about it until Jenny reminded me, pray about it. God will show you when I did that. <laughs> He shows you what we need to see. And I forgot that when I had those problems. Just pray, God will show you the answers. I was in Sunday school and I remember Jen, she came in and her heart rate was like super high. And it was not good. So um, I had one pray for her. Well, they're gonna lie, everyone was like, can I pray in my head? Can I pray in my head? And I decided, and like, kind of like the Lord's telling me to pray out loud. So I did. And he also, and while I was praying, when I got to me, I, he, I, he told me to pray against things that were spiritual. I prayed. And I just kind of like a child's like faith when I was young. I just had like a faith of like a child that. He was gonna heal her. I just believed it that it would just happen. Like I was expecting him to do it, and she was healed. So, yeah. so a little bit of a backstory. Back in July, John and I planned to backpack the Grand Canyon. That's where you pack up your tent and everything on your back. You walk in, you spend the night, pack everything back up, and walk out. Fast forward to December. Unfortunately, we were not able to get a spot. So we kind of buried that dream, said it was okay and moved on. We were just gonna drive out there and make the best of it. So we're driving and we're sightseeing, stopping at a bunch of places along the way. And in Colorado, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, this thought pops into my head that says, you need to check for a last minute backpacking permits in the Grand Canyon. And I'm like, oh my goodness, is this even possible? I didn't pack for this, I didn't plan for this. So I started doing a mental checklist of everything we had in the car and we had accidentally brought, well, not by accident, by the Lord. The Lord allowed us to pack everything we needed except John's sleeping bag and a water filter. And we were four hours away from the last spot to purchase those items. So I told John, I said, hey, I just had this thought. I believe it's the Lord speaking to me and I think we're gonna backpack the Grand Canyon. He said, okay. So we stopped at the store, we bought those items in faith and we went on. Two days later, Thursday afternoon, we walk into the backcountry office. Now, backstory, most people line up at 8 a.m. the day of to get any last minute spots that are available. So I figure since it's 2 p.m., any spots that were available the day before are now taken. But I just was walking in faith with what I heard. And so we walked in and I told the lady, I said, hey, we're looking to backpack the Grand Canyon. Do you have any permits open for tomorrow night, Friday night? She's like, we have one for Saturday. And I said, no, unfortunately, we have other places to be. It has to be Friday night. And her face was pale and she said, oh my goodness, let me check on something. So she gets on her computer and she's looking, she says, you wouldn't believe it. Someone just walked in before you and canceled last minute. And there's a spot open for Friday night to backpack the Grand Canyon. Would you like it? We're like, yeah. 33,000 people backpack the Grand Canyon out of a million every year. It's a very rare thing. And it's even rarer for something to open up. And she's just like, oh my goodness, I can't believe this. This is crazy. Like, this just doesn't happen. I can't believe it. And I'm like, yeah, but my God is so good. And if it wasn't for the Lord helping us pack everything we needed, and if it wasn't for the Lord speaking to us and us walking in faith, we never would have backpacked the Grand Canyon. But because of that, we were able to do something that's a once in a lifetime opportunity and it was amazing so those are some pretty neat testimonies you know they're just everyday things right but how first of all the lord cares he cares about the little things and when we're in that position of our hearts want to bless somebody that he can use us to bless somebody when we don't even realize what we need to do to bless them. Or when you're in that situation where you're, you're feeling like you're getting beat up, ran over, you can't make it through, and you just want to quit, he can show you something to drag you out of that pit. Or when you're hopeless and lost and you're thinking, 
how is this ever going to happen? I can't see it. And then he brings hope to you and brings peace. How when you're in a situation to pray and you don't know what to pray, he can tell you how to pray and what to pray. And then in the meantime, you get to see somebody to be healed. Or you're going on a trip and it's something that means a lot to you. And you think that it's not going to happen. And he says, watch this. And he makes it happen. The, the baseline to every one of those testimonies and every testimony that I've ever heard has a foundation of love. It's because God loves somebody and he cares and he doesn't want to see them lost, hurt, feel hopeless, or abandoned. That is a common denominator when I hear the testimonies that the Holy Spirit is showing me in this. But this is kind of neat. The Lord gave me a, a fresh testimony just here recently. It's kind of neat. I got to share it. Well, about a week and a half ago, well, actually, that was even further than that. It was probably about three to four weeks ago. We have a piece of equipment at work that was... that broke down, and it destroyed part of the machinery. And the maintenance guys went out there, and they, they fixed it and put it back together, but the machine just would not run right. So production uh, supervisor and the people who run the machine every day worked on it for two and a half weeks trying to get it fixed, and they couldn't get it fixed. So the supervisor comes to me, and he says, look, I don't know what else to do. He's throwing his hands up. He's done. So he, he asked for my help. I said, okay. So I went over there and I started troubleshooting. And the first thing I did didn't work. And then I got another idea and I was going to do that one. And I told the maintenance guys, this is what I want you to do. When you come in in the morning, I want you to go over and start working on this situation. So I go home and I go to bed. And as I'm waking up, the Holy Spirit actually shows me what is wrong. Literally shows me. Now, I'm coming unglued inside because I already know this is the Holy Spirit and this is going to be neat. And the reason I'm coming unglued is because the two guys that are working on it, one, the guy in the last year almost died twice. And I've been witnessing to him. The other guy is a Jehovah Witness and doesn't believe in the Holy Spirit. So... I know they're going to be at it first thing before I even get in there. So I'm, the, the Holy Spirit wakes me up. I get ready. I get in there just in time. I walk straight over there before they done anything to the machine. I walked right over to them and I said, the Holy Spirit told me it was this was missing. It's right here. Take it apart. You're going to see it's missing. And then I walked away. <laughs> I walked straight over to the operations manager's office and I walked in and I said, hey, now this guy goes to church. He's a believer. I said, the Holy Spirit woke me up in the morning and told me this is what's wrong. This gasket is missing in this machine. And he looks at me and he says, George, you're thinking way too much about this place. <laughs> it's not, I'm not thinking about it's the Holy Spirit. But here, this is what I'm saying. It, he's a believer that reads the same Bible that I read and he doesn't see it. Well, what do you think the Holy Spirit was doing? He's trying to show his, open his eyes, and he's trying to show, open that Jehovah Witness eyes, and the guy who's almost died twice, he's trying to open his eyes. That's what I was excited about. I mean, I'm excited that it even happened. I got to be part of it. But, I mean, that stirs me up. That's why I'm saying you never know what's going to happen, and you've got to walk in it. You've got to want it. And that takes me to the summary here, if it's up there. These are some of the things that I feel that the Lord has showed me that has helped me on my journey to hearing the Holy Spirit and being used in the Holy Spirit. Number one, be in the Word of God. In 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17, is all Scripture is breathed out, of, by, out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for the training in righteousness, the, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. 
So that's number one right there. Number two, you got to believe the Holy Spirit is our helper that, helper that was sent here for us. John 14, 26, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to you remembrance all that I have said to you. That's number two. Number three, I'm going to tell you, you got to deal with any unforgiveness. Without love, we are nothing. And in Ephesians 4, 1 through 6, I therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, baptism one God, and Father of all, who is over all, through all, and in all. To me, if you wanted to put a, a recipe, this is something that the Lord has showed me. I'm not saying this is all inclusive. Who knows what more is in that Bible that I haven't learned yet. But I know these things here, he showed me, these are key things. Because you got to love the people that are out there to want to be obedient to do some of the crazy things that the Holy Spirit's going to ask you to do. Because you got to. Because if not, would you do them? You got to believe it's going to happen, even though you can't see it, right? Faith isn't by seeing. And one thing you're going to realize is you got to be in that word. If you're not in that word, you're going to miss some things. And do you want to miss out on being part of this supernatural? The Holy Spirit and what he can do for you, what he can do for others, to be a part of seeing others come to know him? To be saved from being going to hell for eternity? So those are just the things that the Holy Spirit gave me. So I hope you take them to heart. And try them. What do you got to lose? I'm going to tell you, if, if you're reading the Bible and you walk away from reading the Bible and you feel like in your, down inside that, man, I don't know if I read enough. I'm going to tell you, Go back to the Word and read some more. Because there's no specific, I can't give you a recipe. You could probably read one verse in a day and the Holy Spirit can reveal a lot to you. But then there's sometimes that maybe you need to read three books in the Bible. What is that limit? Well, I'm going to tell you, if you're walking away from reading the Bible and you feel like you haven't done enough, maybe you haven't then. Maybe you need to go back to it. So I appreciate it. Thank you very much for uh, listening.